Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs, and time for another repair video. So, what I've got here is a TurboGrafx-16. Um, this was made in 1989 by NEC. Um, in Japan, it was made under the name uh, PC Engine. So it was very popular in Japan, not so popular here in North America. Um, so in 89, this came out um, at the same time. Also, the Sega Genesis came out, and then shortly after, the Super Nintendo. So this really got lost in all the noise. Um, honestly, I don't know anyone that had one of these growing up as a kid. So it's a pretty unique system here. Um, the console itself, actually, these are the games that they come in. I only have one, and they are cards. So they insert the cards like that, and you turn it on, and play your games. So definitely a cool system. I managed to pick this up quite a while ago and it's just sat here really doing nothing. So I figured since the TurboGrafx-16 Mini is coming out, uh, I think now, so I um, thought it would be a good time to try and fire up the actual TurboGrafx-16. So let's, uh, let's flip this over and see what we can do here. So it looks like this uses... Uh, security bits so I just have to get my screwdriver and we'll take those out so looks like we've got seven screws that need to come out All right, so once the screws are out, we can lift the bottom off and we've got the shell. So let's take a quick peek in here. So interestingly, it doesn't look like there's any screws holding this together, which is kind of interesting. I guess it's just held together by the case screws. So does this just lift straight up? All right, so there is a, looks like a voltage, is that a voltage regulator? Yeah, 7805. And that is screwed to some sort of heat shield on here. So I don't want to rip that clean off the board, but we need to get this out. Okay, so I see a few more screws. These are all Phillips screws. So let's just remove those. Okay, that should do the trick. And the shell. So, shell's in pretty good shape. Nothing else really going on in the front of here. Um, all the switches, they remain attached to the board itself. It looks like that probably, yeah, that just pops right off. So that's a big switch for the power. And then there's a RF modulator with a channel three and four switch. And a couple screws here to fully remove the heat sink. So, oops. I'm gonna take that off. Okay. 
Now, I forgot to mention um, what the issue was here. Uh, so it says it didn't work, and I actually tested it, and I forgot to record it. I don't know why. Um, and all I got was a gray screen. So we're going to see what the issue here is. Could be the cartridge reader. Could be, I don't know, bad chip or something. So let's take a look. So I don't know if this really picks up here, but you see it kind of looks... It's not sticky, but it looks like it. Like there's a lot of residue here. Uh, what the heck is that? Some sort of something to deflect. What's, wait a second. Oh, what the? F okay, check this out. See if we can see that nice big crack on the main board. I don't know how you managed to do that. I don't know how you possibly crack the main board like that. So no wonder this doesn't work. I'm surprised it powered up at all. Because the power is right here. This crack is going right under what I, I guess that's CPU, maybe? PPU, one of the two. So this crack's going right under here. You can see there's a couple of pins actually lifted clean up. Um, so we've severed all of these traces. Oh, and there's another one here, lovely. Right there by the controller ports. So, not surprising that doesn't work. Crap. So, I mean, it may be fixable. These pins are kind of whack. It might be fixable. Uh, I don't. I don't even know. That sucks. Let's check out the back side. Let me get this off. So I should notice, actually, that just came off. But this board is or the bottom heat shield is actually soldered in place so this is a good example you see there's solder joints here and someone has just ripped that clean off the board same thing here that was actually desoldered this one was ripped off the board so someone who had no idea what they're doing tried to do something okay yeah look at that so that crack goes all the way from here, under here, and goes as far as it looks like to here. So definitely under this CPU or PPU or whatever that is, all the way to there. So probably damaged quite a few traces. And then this one, there's not as much going on here, but I mean, none of this matters if the whatever chip that is is not going to be connecting so that sucks that's not an easy fix but luckily I've got another one so this guy pretty rough shape um, oh, I lied I have two games this one's in pretty rough shape but it actually does boot up so I'm going to actually test this one in front of you, show you how to hook this up, and show you what it looks like. Okay, so just out of the box, um, this guy supports RF out for video. Where is it here? On the side. So RF out, using channels 3 or 4, um, does not have a composite video out. So there are attachments you can get that will actually hook into the back here and allow you to hook up what like the yellow red and white composite uh, video cables but I don't have one of those so we're just gonna hook this up and let's give this a test see how it works so we're gonna test it with dragon spirit push it in um, for those of you wondering you can use if you don't have cables but you managed to come across a turbo graphics you can use just a regular RF uh, adapter that comes with a Super Nintendo or an NES. And you can use 
a Generation 1 or a Sega Master System. It's Generation 1 Genesis or a Sega Master System power adapter and it will work. Do not use a regular NES power adapter because it will probably fry the internals here. So let's turn this bad boy on. There is no LED here, but it does have a little nice sticker to show you power. And what are we getting here? Gray screen. Okay, so Dragon Spirit does seem a little finicky. It might be that this power is not perfectly going in. But, uh, okay, so we're going into demo mode. It looks like it works. Um, as I recall, the issue with this was the controller inputs don't work. So, I have a controller, and I want to show you what the controller looks like. So this is the controller for the Turbo Graphics called the Turbo Pad. Has turbo switches on it, and then two buttons just like the NES: select and run. So the plug of it is a normal eight-pin DIN plug. Um, yeah, let's just plug it in. The problem is these controllers are pretty expensive, and I bought this as not working. So I really don't have a great way of testing the functionality. But it says to start, push the run button. Pushing it, wiggling the cable, not getting anything. So I'm going to take a look at this controller first, and then we're going to dive into the board here, try and solve that. So opening up the controller, it has, looks like five small Phillips screws. So I'm going to use my precision Screwdriver set. And let's take a look at the board. So it looks like the cable can disconnect from the board using this connector here at the top, so that's good. Um, the board itself looks okay. Uh, I don't really see much wear. Maybe these pads could use a little cleaning, but well, we'll give it a clean and see what's going on. Um, I also do want to test out the cable just to make sure that we're getting continuity from these the connector down here to the plug itself. If you're not getting a signal from here to here, that means the wire could be no good as well. Um, so for these pads, there's a couple things I like to do. Firstly, Second. Firstly, I like to grab a sheet of paper and some isopropyl alcohol. Really starting to run low on isopropyl alcohol right now as everyone is buying it up to disinfect their homes. Um, fun fact, if you're buying isopropyl alcohol, 99% stuff to disinfect against the coronavirus, supposedly it's not a very good option because there's actually too high of an alcohol content. It evaporates before it will thoroughly disinfect so save that stuff for us for the uh, people that are repairing games and buy yourself some 70% stuff that'll work a lot better but um, moving forward that's my health tip of the day you might want to fact check that I just saw that somewhere makes sense though um, so for these pads what I like to do just give it a little bit of a wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol just try and get any residue and stuff off of these pads. So you see there's a lot of black coming up here. That's usually carbon that's come up from those carbon pads and it just needs to be cleaned. If you've got buttons that are sticky or take need a really hard press, a lot of times this can solve that. And then once that's done, what I also like to do on my paper, very lightly, with some gentle pressure, just going to rub a couple times each down 
the paper, and this is going to kind of remove imperfections and build up and stuff that might be on these buttons. The goal isn't to get these so that they are not leaving a mark, it's just to wear down a little bit of the residue and stuff on there. So that's looking a bit better. You can't really see the outline or the indents made by those pads anymore. So I'm going to do the same thing, just being very careful, especially with the start and select one. These rubber pads are pretty delicate, and if you break them, really the only option for you is to replace them. You got to go buy a uh, replacement pad kit. They're not expensive, but it's just a pain. It's another thing you got to buy. And then I'm just going to wipe them down one more time with the isopropyl alcohol just to remove any leftover bits that I didn't really capture, capture before. So just like that. You'll notice the Q-tip is still coming up dark and that's perfectly fine. It's not gonna ever be perfect. Good. So I'm gonna do a similar thing with the Q-tip and alcohol and just clean the pads on the board. So anywhere that the buttons would connect, I'm just gonna wipe it down, make sure that there's nothing affecting the uh, quality of the connection. Again, you're not gonna get them perfect. Don't worry about the fact that it's still coming up black. It's gonna do that. You're not gonna be taking all of the carbon off. You don't want to, you just wanna remove any contaminants. If there's something like corrosion on here, then um, you may have to use something a little bit uh, more aggressive, but that should be good. I'm going to let that dry and going to do a quick check on the cable. Um, so as I mentioned, I bought this controller is not working. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it, but um, they just said not working. So it could be a couple buttons, but I doubt it because those pads looked pretty good. could be the cable. The cable could... Um, potentially have a break somewhere and I'm not getting continuity from here to here. So to test that, I'm just going to take my multimeter and put it into the continuity mode, which also usually has this little diode symbol on it, and it will leave a, make a beep when you connect the probes like that. So just what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick a pin. I'm going to start with the middle one, I think. and probe along the board to find the contact. So it's gonna be one of these nine pins right here. Okay, so those two both appear to be ground. So I'm gonna start writing these down. I'm also gonna actually, I'm gonna look for a pinout of what these individual pins are supposed to provide and um, that way I have something to compare against so I can make sure that um, I'm looking in the right places. Okay, so I've gone through and I found actually three points that are not connected. Um, so pin number two, if I isolate that top pin here, based on the pinout, this should be responsible for the up direction and the one button. So it should be connected. Hold my probe there, check each of these. Oh, what's going on? So it should be connected there, and it's not. So I just got to make sure I'm not touching any other pins. And I've got nothing. Same with what should be pins 6 and 7. So let's check that one. This will be number 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Nothing. 7. Nothing. So it looks like we've got a bad cable. Okay, so I've um, I've exposed a very small amount of the wire here on this pin, just so that I can try and test the continuity of it. So let's try and see if I can, I might just use that regulator just so it's easier. There you are. So throw that in pin number two and then see if I can get any signal. I get nothing. So the, oh, 
why did you turn off? Okay, so let's try that again. Nothing there. Better. Okay, so continuity there, continuity there. So we have a connection through the connector. Let's try that pin number two again. Nothing. So we do have a break somewhere along the way. Um, I'm going to say this cable is probably a write-off. So I'm going to order a replacement cable. Um, I did a little bit of looking up and I have found a place that sells replacement cables as well as buttons and pads for these. So uh, I'm going to put an order in for a replacement one. But in the meantime, I want to get this working and try and see if we can't solve this. So I think we need to find another point where I can test just to see if this works. What would make sense is closer to the end here somewhere. Um, that way I can isolate whether there's a break in this or if there's an issue in this plug. So I think I'm going to do that. So let's see, this should be shielded. So I'm curious if I touch this against pin number eight or nine, do I get any continuity on this shielding? Nothing. Interesting. So I wonder if that just means that the shielding's not actually connected to anything, which is possible. And that could explain why the outside of this doesn't get any ground and it just goes through that middle pin instead. But either way, <clears throat> that also means I can cut away some of the shielding to expose the wires underneath. I'm just curious, do I get continuity here? I don't. So that's curious. So it is kind of sticky. There's some sort of something in here. All right, and these are the wires. So the one I was having issue with was that white one. So I think I'm going to try the same test here. I'm going to expose a tiny portion of that here and just going to see if I get continuity back to that connector and if I get continuity to the plug. So I'm just going to use my wire strippers for this. I'm going to get in there. Okay, that should do it. So I've got a little bit exposed. So let's go back to this white one here. This was pin two. And I'm just gonna pin this down first. Okay, so I have continuity all the way to here but I'm guessing I don't get any into here. I do not. And don't get it on any other pins. So that tells me something is gone wrong here. So I'm gonna see if I can find a way to open this up. We can test the connections in this plug and maybe even fix it. Kind of feels like it. Oh, okay. All right, so check this out. So this tip, it looks like it plugs directly into here, like so. And it's got these little connectors at the bottom, but three of them, the ones that I've identified that don't work, look to be snapped off. So there's no remnants left in here. 
So I'm wondering, does that mean this was pulled off at some point and tried to fix it? Uh, I don't know. But let's check the continuity from inside the plug to the connector. Possibly that's the only issue. So again, I've got my probe or my regulators set up here on number two, and then I'm gonna shove a probe in here. Let's see what we've got. Hopefully it works. And it does. Cool. Um, plug number six. I believe that's that one. Cool. Plug number seven. No, oh, lost my connection. Okay, so we are getting continuity into here, just not into the plug. So I wonder if I can somehow connect this to this, just at least so I can test it. Hmm. Okay, so I've um, been able to get some of this apart and there's really no good way to do it aside from cutting it apart. Um, these are kind of molded in place on top of this little plastic, we'll call it a canister. So, what's that? Oh, that's ground wire, clearly. So that should connect to here. Interesting. So that was supposed to be soldered to there, and it clearly was not. But, um, so this is all, everything, all the terminations are put in here. Um, I don't see a way in this without cutting it apart either. So clearly this was molded together in some way. So I think we're going to have to cut this whole thing apart and um, may end up trying to solder directly to this connector. Okay, so what, what my plan here is going to be is I'm going to actually, I've removed the end here, and I'm going to solder the end to this. I'm going to cover it back up with this, and I'm going to try and basically inject some hot glue into here, just so that I have something substantial that this can grab onto, glue it back here, and hopefully we should have a reasonably durable um, repair. In fact, actually, I'm going to go back to before where I made that cut, just so it's a little nicer looking. Okay, so I've made myself a little guide with the colors and where they're supposed to go on the back side of this connector. So I'm going to put that over to the side so I can reference that. And I've stripped all the conductors here. I've left the shielding twisted together, and that's going to get soldered to the shielding here for ground. And just going to apply some flux and tin all these conductors here. And now the fun part of attempting to solder them to this. So this is going to be where it gets tricky. Um, it's where I really need to buy myself a helping hand, but I haven't.
Okay, so I've got all the connectors in here. It's not the prettiest job, but it does look like they are holding. So I'm gonna do a quick continuity check before I go any farther. Okay, so continuity check worked fine. Um, so now I need to try and get this braid attached to here. And I'm actually going to, I think, cover some of that in some heat shrink tubing because I don't want it falling out and shorting anything. So let's get some small tube. I should do the trick, I think. There. That should be great. Perfect. So now I'm going to try and sh try and solder to that shielding, which may be somewhat tricky. Same thing. Just going to tin that first. There's just a lot of surface area here, so it can be kind of tricky to actually solder something this size. Okay, that should be good. Looks like that's staying perfect. So now going to put it back into its strain relief here. Try and get this lined up the way we would like. So that should be up. And I think that means like this. Let me just double check with the actual system itself. careful. Okay. Ah, lost my ground. Well, let's try solder to that old blob there. But yeah, that is the correct orientation. So Going to, I'm going to cut a little hole here that I can get my hot glue gun nozzle in and we'll try kind of inject that. It's a really kind of poor man's injection mold. All right, so now to reattach this. Uh, so I'm going to put this shield on back on here. That's the way, yep. Now, you want to orient this arrow here so that it's going to be pointing in the direct, correct direction. So, the you'll notice that there's basically a gap in the pins here. That should be pointing down, so the arrow should be up. And you'll need enough there so that it can go in. There's a little ridge into the console, sorry. There's a little ridge in this plug. So, you can usually find where that ridge was molded onto here. And sometimes you can even kind of line that up, but I would say anything as long as this solder connection is covered is probably good. Being careful again not to rip any wires out, I would say just like that. Okay, so now I'm not quite ready yet. Um, what I want to do is try and join some of this rubber back together. So I'm going to be using um, a cheaper soldering iron I have, and just 
oops, I got some solder on there. Just going to try and heat this up and pinch it together. Didn't work very well there. Let's try it again here. So heat it up a touch, pinch it together, and it should melt itself shut. Just like so. Okay, so this guy, I'm going to line this up right there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try and just uh, use a little bit of, use my soldering iron, melt that rubber a little bit, and let it kind of fuse together. I'm just going to do that in a couple of places just so that we have it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to try, just pump as much in here as quickly as I can and get it to fill up up around the front where all those connectors are. Hopefully it will fill that pretty well before it starts cooling. I might work my way towards the back. Need a refill. Maybe try fire some in through this little hole in the back as well. Does not seem very receptive. So that shouldn't be moving. And it's not. So I'm going to let that cool and just uh, take off any of the excess glue here. Obviously, that's pretty ugly looking. But once it dries or once it cools, it should come off relatively easily. All right, so the plug is, I'm going to say dry, but that's not right. The plug is cooled, and it's not too, too bad. It seems to be holding its shape. Um, that plug's not going anywhere. Hopefully that's enough exposed. And... Strain relief, eh, I could I could touch that up a bit still. But um, the point is, should work. So I want to double check all my continuities here again before I start reassembling this thing. So I'm gonna throw this into the, come on, onto the board and start probing with my multimeter. I'm just gonna speed through this and I really hope there's no failures here because that would suck to take this all apart. Um, obviously, we haven't addressed that uh, turbo graphics that I have here that has the bad controller input, but I mean, this is just really, this is probably going to be the end of this video, but illustrating a quick, kind of not really great way, but a quick way to try and repair a bad plug. The ideal way, of course, is to replace that plug, but I can't really, I don't have a part for that right now, and it takes quite a while to get stuff shipped to Canada right now, so I'm gonna make do with what I've got. All right, controller shells, where did I put you? There you are. In another video, I might go through and actually fully clean this, but for the time being, this is gonna have to do. Get my switches.
Okay. Okay. So that's reassembled here. And I've got my plug. It's not the greatest. I might try and sand that down, make it look a little bit nicer. But I mean, it's there. I have continuity. It should work. It's solid. So let's try, hook it up to that turbo graphics and you never know maybe it even works so controller in here And TV. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Maybe whoever sold this really didn't have a good way of testing it, and maybe it works. Let's let's see what happens. Okay. Push run. Hey, it works. Well, let's see here. Okay, right button doesn't seem to work. Left works, forward works, back works, shoot works, pause works, but no right. Why is that? Well, let's, uh, let's open her up and let's try it out again. Okay, so we found that the right direction didn't work and possibly this number two button doesn't work. Um, I couldn't really confirm because I just... I'm not familiar with how the game is supposed to behave, so I'm just going to double check this before we go into the console itself and check. So we do have continuity. So there's no reason that it shouldn't work unless there's a break somewhere else on the board here. So let's just follow that third pin. It should go through to here. That's a resistor. I'm just going to follow this just to make sure there's no issues that I can see anywhere. In theory, we could have a bad chip, but I'm, I'm thinking it's more likely that the issue lies with either the connection to the console or maybe the port itself. So I'm just going to try this one more time with the console itself and just try to clean that port a little bit, see if I can get this working. Okay, so just want to make sure that the actual port itself is not dirty or contaminated or anything, so I'm just going to throw some alcohol in this plug and going to plug the power and just plug it in and insert it a few times. And let's try that. All right, so push run, starting. Still no right action. Left works, no right. Number one should shoot. Number two doesn't seem to do anything. So um, I'm thinking maybe even an issue inside the console with the, uh, with the actual controller port. So just so that this particular video doesn't get too, too long, I'm gonna end this one here. And I'm going to tackle that in part two of this. So, um, I'm going to, yeah, that's going to be about it for here. So, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking the channel. Uh, leave me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, part two, I'm going to get started on that actually pretty much right away. So, hopefully, it shouldn't be too long of a wait for that one. But I'm going to actually dive into this, um, try and get this working as well as possible. And I have a better shell from that other Turbo Graphics. So, I might even do a bit of a shell swap here. So, once again, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next video.